Hi everyone, welcome to Boston, 1776. His Majesty, King George III, has asked us to root out some of the most troublesome of the Boston rebels using ye olde big data. We're going to use graph theory to identify the rebel leaders here, and also wow the audience at the next Theodore talk. Alright, so let's get started. Um, if you don't have Network X installed yet, the way you do that is documented here. You can do conda install network x at the command line. Also, a big shout out to uh, this blog who gave me this uh, fantastic idea. Such a this is a really cool example. Uh, thank you so much for posting this. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read some data in, and I'll show you what this data is. This data is going to be a matrix of on this side, so this is a pandas data frame, and in this side it's going to have people, and these are people that were um, that are associated with the uh, American Rebellion. Remember, we're speaking from the British perspective here, and here is a set of groups, and these groups are groups that each of these people can be a member of. So you can see here that um, Samuel Adams, you're, I, you prize probably not heard of him. Um, he happens to be a member of the North Caucus, the Long Room Club, the Boston Committee, and the London Enemies. Hmm. And so, if we were to, and this is only a small sample of the data frame, if you were to look at the entire data frame, it would be 254 people by seven different groups. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say... Um, and by the way, I'm going to take that data frame and I'm going to set that equal to another one, people by groups, because you can see this is people by groups. Okay, I'm going to put that away for a second. Now, if I transpose this data frame, and that's what this means, this is just like a matrix transposition, dot T is transpose. What happens is everything flips, and now we have the seven rows as being the groups and the people being the columns. So now I have, and I'm going to put that into a, a variable called groups by people. And so you can see that I have both of those um, just opposite of each other. People by groups, 254 by 7. Uh, groups by people, 7 by 254. All right. Now here's the really cool part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the... Um, people by groups matrix, I'm going to take, and I'm going to multiply it by the groups by people matrix. So if you, if you haven't done this before, or if you, it's been a while since you've had uh, linear algebra, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 254 by 7 matrix and multiply it by a 7 by 254 matrix. And in the end, what I'm going to get is a 254 by 254 matrix of people by people. And so what we're going to have here is a is um a matrix of people and there will be a number uh between the people and that's the number of groups that they share in common okay so that's a little bit weird to think about let me see if i can um show you just a, a short example of that Okay, so you can see that Adams Samuel and Adams John have two groups in common with one another. Make sense? Okay. Of course, Adam John and Adam John have two groups in common with each other, and that really means that Adams John is a member of two groups, but that doesn't matter right now. Okay. So what this is, is a, is a um, matrix of people and how they connect to each other using the groups as membership. There's, this, uh, the, there's a sociologist that, that came up with this idea to do this, and this is called the duality of persons and groups. And what it says is that um, people are connected by the groups they belong to, and groups are connected by the people that belong to them. It's pretty cool. And it's very usable for social network analysis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this matrix. We call this an adjacency matrix. 
um, which shows how strongly connected two people are. And I'm going to take this matrix in a, from Pandas and I'm going to put it into a data uh, into um, Network X. And to do that, I'm going to say um, people adjacency dot values. What this does is this takes the data frame and returns it into a numpy numpy array. And then this nx dot from numpy matrix takes a numpy matrix as an argument and turns it into a graph object. So we've gone from pandas data frame to numpy object to graph. And then this right here is a way to pull out the names of the people and use those as the names of the nodes. All right, so that wasn't too confusing, I hope. Um, so what I'm going to do first, before I do anything else, is I'm going to draw this graph. So let's see how these Boston citizens look. Here it is. This is a really kind of hard to read graph because you can see there's a lot of people that are highly connected. And you can almost imagine those seven groups appearing here, right? Because this, this right here, these people, they're all very, very well connected. And yeah, they're connected to these other people through, you know, these guys. Um, but these people together, they're, they make up kind of a community. We call this a clique. Ditto here. This is another click. And so you can start seeing these clicks. And there's actually click detection algorithms that we could run. Um, but I'm not going to go into that today. Um, what I'm more interested in is I'm more, more interested in finding the most troublesome rebels. And so I'm guessing, if I had to guess, that those are probably some of these people, right? Because these people in here are tying all of these clicks together, right? Okay. So. This is kind of hard to see because this is a, a 40 by 40 graph and it's it's really small in my IPython uh, notebook. So I'm going to I'm going to save it and show you the saved file. And that looks like this and I can zoom in on it. And so let's zoom in a little bit. And so you can start to see as we move around here Uran Thomas, Peck, Samuel, hey Revere Paul, I've heard of that guy. Um, Thomas Young, right? Okay, so you get the idea. There's some people in the middle that are pretty, um, pretty famous, and these guys are the guys that are kind of tying the graph together. So if we really wanted to quash this American rebellion, what we would do is we would want to target these people in the middle. All right. So now that I've talked about that, um, let's see if there's a way that we can measure the um, importance of these people. To what, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use eigenvector centrality. And uh, what that does is, um, I've, I think I've shown this in the previous lecture, and this gives us a dictionary of each node and its centrality number, how central that node is to the network. Um, a dictionary is cool, but I want to be able to sort, and I can't do that in a dictionary, so I'm going to take this dictionary and I'm going to co coerce it into a list of tuples. And then I'm going to sort that list of tuples by um, the centrality measure. So what we'll do is we'll get a list of the most central people first. Because, I mean, with so many rebels, it's hard to know where to start. So maybe we should start um, at the very top of our sorted list with this character here, Paul Revere. All right. Thanks, everyone.